people knew of, of BMF. You know, you have to remember in the 90s, BMF had a huge influence in the hip hop scene in Atlanta and whatnot. So a lot of people who are my age now grew up in that time and knew of them. Hi, Russell. Thank you so much for speaking with Pop Culture today. How are you? I'm doing well, Brenda. And yourself? I'm doing amazing. Obviously, a fan of the new stars show about Black Family Mafia. It's amazing. You guys are really killing it over there. Thank you. Of course. So were you a fan of 50 Cent's um, previous produced shows on stars prior to hearing about BFM? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I had watched Power and was... Um, and, and and been watching Raising Canaan as well. I hadn't, I, and I started watching Ghost Book too, you know. Um, you know, I'm a fan. What I like to do, I like to support us, our people. Uh, a lot of a lot of my friends that I came up in the game with are on all those shows too. Um, big fan of Patina Miller's, you know. Um, watched Amari come up. Just a lot of, you know, um, Notori, I've known her since way back. So it's just that you want to be able to support your friends and see them. Do, and you're happy to see them do well. And this one is obviously is not a part of the whole power. Like it's it's not a branch off of power, but it's it's equally as amazing. So how familiar you, were you with the actual true story that the show is based off? And what type of research did you have to do, if any, to prepare for the role? You know, um, I was I had I was familiar with them, but like I had heard about it and I had seen some YouTube clips and, and stuff like that, but not really uh, well versed. I wasn't in depth. You know, I didn't have an in-depth knowledge about about BMF. Um, and so the, honestly, there wasn't really a lot of research um, as it pertains for me and my character. <clears throat> You know, Charles is no longer with us, mm -hmm. but I had an opportunity to speak with the real Lucille. She gave me a great uh, background on their uh, on their lives, their relationship, their marriage and those things of that nature. But also because I, I was raised in I was born in the 70s, grew up in the 80s. This is I know a lot about this period. Right. Mm -hmm. And also, I like to say that life. Is, was a prepared me for this role or prepared me for this opportunity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just living long enough kind of allows you to be ready for uh, roles like these. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously the, the show was off with a bang. By episode two, you guys were renewed for a second season. So how excited were you to get the news that early on in the game for the show? And what do you feel like makes this show register so much with viewers that it was picked up for a second season pretty much immediately? Well, I, I, first and foremost, I was very excited. Everybody, you know, every actor wants continued employment. You know what I mean? And um, to be able to know that I'll be able to, to tell this story or be a part of this storytelling for another year is exciting. Um, but what I think that uh, audiences were really sort of blown away by, I think first and foremost, a lot of people were familiar with BMF. People knew of, of BMF. You know, you have to remember in the 90s, BMF had a huge influence in the hip hop scene in Atlanta and whatnot. So a lot of people who are my age now grew up in that time and knew of them, right? And I also just think that because it's based on a true story, and I think that people are really excited by the authenticity of it, you know, um, that it's um, that we're just going really, really deep and and not skimming, just skimming on the surface of things, you know, really going in depth in this and telling the story. And outside of this show, you were it was recently announced that you're going to be playing Don King in the new Hulu series, Iron Mike. And there are like so many projects right now that are delving into uh, Mike Tyson's life and his career. Um, but not a lot of them really highlight Don King's um, contribution, I guess, to not just Tyson, but to, to boxing in general. Um, so how is it for you to portray such an iconic, controversial figure for the sport? Well, you know, first and foremost, I'm, I'm a little nervous. I can't lie. You know, um, you know, the thing is, it's it's not about getting it right or wrong. It's about getting it true. Mm -hmm. And so as just for me as an actor, what I look to do, we, we know that there are aspects of Don King that is a showman, that he is a character 
and some would say a caricature in some standpoints. And, and, um, and that's all there. But for me, I have to be able to find moments where we can give humanity, where no matter what we what, what our perception of him is or what we think or thought of him, that we know that he's a human being. And so where do, where did this behavior come from? Mm-hmm. How did how did it come about? How did it manifest? And I look to ask those questions. I look to find that out and I have to create that for myself because it's not it's, it's not readily that that knowledge is not readily available. So I have to extrapolate from the givens about who he is or who he was um, and then create a whole backstory and idea about how we how Don King came to be is Don King. You know what I mean? And so that's my job. And I'm excited by it. Like I said, a little nervous, but I think it's going to be good. I think I'm really I'm really looking forward to people seeing it. Uh, Trevante Rhodes is killing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Quite honestly. And I'm having fun. Well, I'm nervous for you about the the Don King hair. So I'm 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 going, I'm very interested to see how this how this project comes out. And obviously, the trailer for um, Lost in Space season season three recently dropped, and your role is kind of like a mystery. So, what can you tell us about your character and working on the show? Um, you know, I think I have to I have to be sort of uh, hush hush about the character. They want to make a, a nice reveal, um, but I mean. It was my first job in the pandemic. I was excited uh, to, to initially I was excited just to be working. And then I, I was telling a few people about it and I didn't realize how many, you know, there was so many fans like in my family, my brother and his son watch it on a regular. And I was like, oh, wow. And then to a couple other friends of mine, they're like, oh, man, Lost in Space. That's my show. And I was like, wow, I didn't even really know it existed. So just hearing about other people's excitement and enthusiasm about the show and me being a part of it got me more energized, you know, uh, to be a part of it. So I'm excited. I was excited to work on it and I had a lot of fun. And um, I think it's going to be I think my contribution is going to be a good one, you know, when it when people come out, when it, people see it. Um, and you've played so many amazing roles that like really highlight and celebrate Black men and the Black family structure in such a positive way. Obviously, we love you from Lincoln Heights. Um, I love doing the Hate You Give and Fences specifically. Um, what kind of factors go into the way that you choose your roles and how are you avoiding being like pigeonholed or typecast into stereotypical roles? Um, you know, it's I, I think that as many fathers as I play, we have to see, see, it's interesting. I'm getting the moniker of being like the new Black dad. You know what I mean? And, it, and I don't mind it. It's great. I, I But it's my job to bring um, a kaleidoscope. You know what I mean? To bring uh, uh, different images and um, a different depth to each and every character. Because they're not just fathers, but they're different. And I think it's important that people see and understand the differences because there's, they're, under, they're living under different circumstances. And so for me, it's not just me being a father. It's like, it's me being a father in the 80s. It's me being a father in the 80s who's, uh, who's steeped in the word. It's me being a father in the 80s who's steeped in the word who is a musician. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's that. Then it's being a father in, in the, in the, in the two, early 2000s who's a police officer who has three kids. You know, so it's all of those things. It's being a father... And present in the in the in the in the in the teen two thousands and teens, who's a former gangbanger, who's trying to seek redemption, who's now trying to raise his kids and his family, who's who's a who's a, a homeowner and also a business owner, an entrepreneur. How does that change the way you approach the character, approach the role? And so for me, every father, every character is different, and I have to give them, uh, a, a, you know, a, they have to come up under a, a different lens. Than, than what I did before. And that's a challenge, do you know what I mean? That's a serious challenge for me as an actor. And I just try to bring variety to every role that I play because I like to think of myself as a citizen of the world. And I've met many different fathers, many different men as I've met many different people, you know? And so all of those, those spirits that I've met, they've, 
they've, they've tapped me, they've tapped into me in some different way, you know? Um, and also I believe that black men deserve to be honored, mm -hmm. you know? And I've been saying this in a lot of interviews and I think it's worth repeating even now that there was a time when boats were made of wood and men were made of steel. And so when, when we're talking about a, a father who's raising his kids in the eighties, he's of a time where all he knew how to do was work with his hands and, and, and do backbreaking work that that was the only way you could provide for your family. Mm -hmm. So how does that affect you emotionally, physically, spiritually? Do you know what I mean? And so fathers and men react differently at that time because the way they were living was different as fathers now mm -hmm. are reacting differently because the times are different. The circumstances with which we earn a living are a lot different than it was 30 and 40 years ago. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, you, you talk about how you hear about how like parents were like, oh, I had a quick temper, do as I say, not as I do. You know what I mean? Hey, don't, hey you better be, behave yourself. I'm coming over there. Whoop your ass. You know what I mean? All that kind of stuff. That shortness of temper, I believe, was based on the circumstances. There was less patience because people were tired because they were working so hard. Not say people don't work hard now, but you understand what I'm trying to, what I'm getting at. Yes. You know what I mean? So you have to, as an actor, I have to take all of that into consideration. I know you, I, that's a, I went on a tangent. I apologize, but I'm, you no, know. No, it's okay. Um, and you mentioned that you you you're becoming um, like, I guess America's favorite dad. Okay, to be <laughs> um, in all of your roles now. But um, what is a role that you haven't played that you would like to play? You know, that's a, wow. That's a very good question. See, for me, I, I would love to uh, embody um, Easy Rollins. I would love to, you know, do. Um, I would love to embody Easy Rollins based on the Walter Mosley books uh, that he created, Devil in the Blue Dress, which was first done by Denzel Washington. I would love to, to sort of play one of the characters that um, Walter Mosley has created. Um, there's Socrates Furtlow and all of that, because I, I feel like I want to represent the everyman. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so it's 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 the working man, it's it's the the, the intelligent hoodlum, you know what I mean? It's the brother who may run some numbers. It's the brother who knows how to fix everything. It's the brother who's got an ear to the street that can help somebody with a little something. That's what I want to, that's what I want to uh, embody, you know, um, because the again, renaissance man. The overall, thank you. The overall, thank you. The overall Renaissance man that a lot of brothers, that a lot of brothers are because we got to hustle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And sisters too, but you know what I mean? Like brothers got to do a little bit of everything. So you become a you become good at, you know, jack of all trades. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been amazing speaking to you. Um, I'm definitely enjoying this season. I can't wait until next season of the show. I, as I mentioned, I'm a huge fan of your work. So thank you for taking the time to speak with pop culture today and we will be watching. My pleasure. Thank you.